What's going on, everybody? What's going on? I hope you guys are having a lovely Wednesday evening because I know I am. I'm excited. It's my favorite time of the week, the Wi-Fi Money Wednesday leadership call. Let's go. You guys are pumped up. I want you guys to put some put some sevens in the chat right now if you're excited, if you are lit for your future, because this is the first step in the right direction. And this is why you saw always say in college, today is the first day of the rest of our lives. So I am grateful and excited to share with you guys some of the you know information and knowledge that I've used over the last four years to you know build a multiple six-figure business in this organization. So I want to be able to give you guys all the tips, tricks, nuggets that I've learned over the years in the industry. So you guys can obviously use them and you know build your own massive organization. So tonight you're gonna be hearing from me and then my amazing business partner Joshua Amundsen, who will be you'll be hearing from in a little bit. But for those of you guys that do not know who I am personally, my name is Jay Patnode. I'm 25 years old. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And like I said, I've been doing this business for about four years now. And it has honestly been the most life-changing thing that I could have ever, you know, wished for. You know, it's everything that I've ever wanted and more. It's something that when you make a decision to be a professional in this industry and actually, you know, take this serious and go full-time and reach all of your goals, I promise you, there's nothing like it. You know, we dream of being able to to do a lot of things when we're younger. You know, when we're young, we have such massive goals. You know, we want to be actors, entertainers, we want to be rich and famous on the islands and all this different stuff. And, you know, the wealth part and the freedom part, this is, you know, something that we're allowed to obtain, you know, through this industry. You know, unfortunately, I'm only 5'11". My vert wasn't 40 inches, so I wasn't making it to the league. You know, so I had to, you know, shift my focuses somewhere else. And this industry has allowed, you know, just a normal person, an average person, you know, probably just like a lot of you guys to, you know, have above average dreams, goals, and ambitions. So it's pretty, it's pretty dope. But thank you guys for all getting on the call. Thank you guys for all getting the call. Hope you guys take some value. Before I go ahead and start and get into the meat and the potatoes, I want you guys to make sure you have a pen or a paper or something to take notes on because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a proven fact that you'll forget 90% of the information if you don't write it down. And you only retain 10% of the information. And then, you know, what was the point of hopping on this call in the first place? If you're not going to be able to use um, any of the information that was given to you. So please make sure you get a pen or a paper. You know, I promise you that you'll want to take notes on this stuff. So with no more, you know, further introduction, let me get into it. So right now I want to, I'm going to talk to you guys about, you know, raising the bar. You know, raising the bar. How many of you guys would want, you know, would love to raise the bar in your life, on your income, on your relationships, on your energy level, on your health? You know, if you would want to raise the bar on those things, let me go ahead and see some ones in the chat. Let me see. I want you guys to participate. Let me see some ones in the chat. How many of you guys would love to raise the bar on, you know, just all the aspects in your entire life? Okay. I see a lot of people would love to raise the bar. And I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean. When I say raising the bar, I mean, make sure you guys are taking notes. I'm talking about your belief, your activity, and your results. See, something that is so crucial in this industry, and just in life, honestly, like I was saying, just in any aspect of life is understanding that belief, activity, and results are the key pillars to anything that you want to obtain in this, you know, in this world. Belief, actions, and results. I say belief, belief activity, results, but belief, action and results. See, your belief fuels your actions and your actions fuel your results. And when you have results, that fuels back in to your belief level. So some more people are getting the call. I'm going to go ahead and just give it like 10 more seconds. I want to repeat that. I want them to understand what I am saying. So let me go ahead and say that again. Your belief fuels your actions, your actions fuel your results and your results thus feel your belief. And a lot of people always ask me, you know, how can I raise the bar? How can I raise my belief? How can I raise my, you know, my activity? How can I raise my results? Well, I'll go ahead and just start off with the B, the belief. How can you, you know, it all starts with belief. The whole cycle starts with belief. You know, your success level will never pass your belief. I want you guys to write this down. Your success level will never pass your belief level. If you don't believe you can do something, well, shit, you'll never actually do it. If you don't believe you can do something, you never actually will do it. So understand that your success level will never pass your belief level. 
You know, if your success level is not high, then odds are your belief is not that high either. And this stands for people that just got into the business or have been in it for a long time. Maybe you're in a quote unquote rut or you're maybe not being able to break that next level. Well, do you truly believe that you'll be successful? You know, do you truly believe that you'll be able to hit advisor, become advisor, you know, make $10,000 a month? I'm not saying it would it be nice to, or I, I hope that I can hit these things. I'm not saying would it be nice to, I'm not saying, you know, it's great. It'd be awesome if these things happen. I'm saying, do you truly believe that you can accomplish these things? You know, there's a very big difference between belief and hope. I want to talk about this for a second. Belief versus hope. You know, what, what, it, what is hope? You know, hope is, you know, belief or no, hope is, you know, wishing something will come true or hoping something that will come true. Belief, you know, you believe that these things will actually come true. You believe that you'll be a six-figure earner. You believe that you'll be a six-figure trader. You'll believe that you'll be an amazing leader. You'll believe you'll be on stage. You believe that you can do all of these things. So like I'm saying, like I was saying, you will not be able to accomplish anything that you don't believe. You know, the mind is a very powerful thing. You know, what you think about becomes your reality. What you are constantly focusing on becomes your reality. We talk about it a lot. We talk about manifestation, the power of manifestation, the law of attraction, the law of belief. So understand that it starts with belief. You know, if you don't truly believe that you can get these things done, I promise you, they won't happen. You know, I want you to understand that it's, it's all about your energy. It's all about your energy. So don't hope actually believe you know I'm, when i had nothing in my pocket when i have 200 dollars in my bank account i believed that i was going to be a six-figure earner and guess what it happened and like i was saying i wasn't just hoping you know i was believing that it actually was going to happen i was telling people i was telling all of my friends anyone that's close to me josh knows this i always knew i always believed that these things would happen and you know fast forward they have happened and i am very blessed and grateful but I also, you know, had the understanding that I knew that these things were going to happen and the same things can happen for you. Just like I know that we're going to go hit a million dollars a month. I know that this company and I believe that this company is going to be the biggest in the industry. Not only the biggest. I mean, it's cool to be the biggest, but the most impactful, the most six figure earners on the trading side and the business building side. So I believe these things are going to happen. So, you know, how can you raise your belief level? That's the question I usually get. How can I raise my belief level? Write this down. How can you raise your belief level? I'm going to talk about it. Well, the very first thing is always going to be your environment. You know, your environment. What are you surrounded by? Who do you surround yourself by? Are you surrounding yourself with success? Or are you surrounding yourself with, you know, doubts and haters and, and negativity and, and things that aren't positive? You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just saw my boys put in the chat. Put your cameras on, guys. I would love to see your beautiful faces. I always do. So thank you to the people that do have their cameras on. But big do. Like, <laughs> but like I was saying, though, it starts with your environment. You know, the problem is a lot of us create our own challenges. Like we put ourselves in these situations to have doubt, you know, to not have belief around people that are negative. They're saying all oh, those things will never work or oh, you'll never become a good trader or you weren't smart in high school, so you're not gonna be good at this. You know, all that negative energy, I don't surround myself with it. All of the people that I keep around me know and believe I'm gonna do whatever I say I put my mind to. You know, everybody around me knows I only keep people that believe in me, because otherwise, why would I wanna spend time with them? You know, why would you ever wanna spend? So understand your environment is very crucial. So who are you spending time with? You know, the quote we always say is, you are the sum of the five people around you. You are the average of the five friends that you actually hang out with. You know, if all five of your closest friends or people that you're spending the most time with are smoking, odds are you're a smoker. If all five of your friends you hang out with are drinking, odds are you're going to drink, you know, you're a drinker. Think about in high school. You know, did you hang out with people that played sports? Did you hang out with people that, you know, didn't? If you didn't, there's nothing wrong with that. But that means you probably didn't play sports. Same thing. If you played sports, your friends, it's just your environment. Understand that if you hang around people that are wealthy, you know, if all five of your closest friends make six figures or are millionaires, odds are you're probably making six figures or a millionaire or on your way to it. If all your friends are broke, I mean, it probably shows. Are you broke? That is the question you have to ask yourself. So understand your environment. And when I say just, when I say your environment, I'm not just only talking about, you know, obviously who you surround yourself with, but what are you surrounding yourself with? 
You know, what are you listening to on a daily basis? Who are you listening to on a daily basis? You know, are you listening to, you know, music that's not really talking about anything positive? And don't get it wrong. I, you know, I listen to a bunch of music. I love music, but we call it the 80-20 rule. 80% personal development, you know, things that are going to better me in my life and my business. And then 20%, you know, leisure and fun and stuff like that. So what are you listening to? Music, audios, you know, are you listening to Eric Warren GoPro? If you haven't, obviously we'll drop it at some point in this chat. Are you listening to Eric? Or are you listening to your mentors? Are you talking to your upline on a daily basis, you know, asking them, you know, just how can I be great today? What is the next thing I can be great with? What is the next, you know, what is the next milestone that I can go ahead and accomplish? What should I do today to become successful? You know, your friends, your family. So understand it's not only, you know, who you're with, but it's also, you know, what, is, what are you allowing to creep into your head? You know, the one thing I will not allow in my life is negativity. I won't let people come to me with problems. You don't come talking to me about problems unless we're going to be talking about solutions in that same conversation. Don't tell me this isn't working, that isn't working. No, we need to sit down and actually have solutions. Just talking about the problems won't change anything. You're just going to be sulking in your sorrow. I know you guys can feel me on that, understand that. So understand your belief level. If you want to increase, it starts with your environment. What is your environment? Who you're surrounding yourself with? What are you listening to? What are you consuming yourself with? You know, a way you can raise your belief level is audios, like I was saying before, books, do you read? I know a lot of people don't want to read, but the thing is anybody can read five to 10 pages a day. And that's all you need to do sometimes. Anybody can read five to 10 pages a day. Anybody can throw on 30 minutes of an audio when they're working out or they're at work or whatever it is, you know, or driving. You probably spend 30 minutes to an hour in a car a day. So if you don't have the time to listen to audios, go ahead and just put it on while you're in the car. Very simple. You can change these little aspects to raise your belief. You know, another thing, I have a question. Have any of you guys ever drove or test drove your dream car? Or have any of you actually seen your dream car in person? Have you sat in it? Have you felt it? Have you smelt it? No? It's free to do this. I mean, for, for most things, you know, some things you obviously can't test drive for free, but you can go to the lot. You can go, go to the dealership, look around, touch stuff, feel it, get the feel. You got to understand that that's your environment as well. So if you really want something, think about the thing you want most. Let's just talk about cars for an instance. Let's talk about this. If you want that car, if you believe that you're going to get that car, if you want to raise your level of belief, go feel it so you can feel what it feels like to sit in it. Adjust the seats a little bit. You know, if you if you six four six five, I'm not, but I sit like it when I'm in the car. You know, you're gonna move it all the way back. You're gonna let it. You know, you're gonna feel it. So understand, there's an energy, there's a vibration that comes with these things. You know, something that I've done a lot is. I drive around the neighborhoods that I've always wanted to live in since I was like 16. Since I could drive, I was driving around, you know, the Minnetonkas, the Eden Prairies. If you're in Minnesota, you know what I'm talking about. I was driving around the Maple Groves and the, and the areas and the places thinking to myself like, yo, this is going to be my home one day. I pick it and just pretend as if it was mine. You know, in my head, I drive, drive back to that same neighborhood and go around and go around and, and, and feel what it'd feel like to come in here and be like, yo, this is my, this is my neighborhood. So these are ways you can raise your belief. Start surrounding yourself with these images. You know, if you want something bad enough, print it out. If it's a picture of its car, print it out. Put it right on your wall. So you look at it every single day. Start visualizing yourself. Wake up in the morning. You know, if you don't like your environment, if you don't like where you're staying at right now, wake up in the morning, close your eyes, and envision yourself somewhere else. The exact place that you want to be. What are you smelling? What can you taste in the air? You know, are you waking up? And in my eyes, this is me. I'm waking up opening the door to my amazing Miami penthouse. I open up the door, the salt water air just hits me in the face. I'm like, oh man, this is beautiful. My cup of coffee, I take a sip. I walk into my, you know, either my wife or my maid, whoever is, whoever is there at the moment by that time in life. And they're cooking me breakfast. I got the eggs. I got the turkey sausage, the bacon, the hash browns. See, these are all things that I'm surrounding myself with. I'm, I'm painting the image for myself. So understand these are all things that raise your belief. You know, all this stuff is free. To do all this stuff, to raise your belief, it is free. And so that's what brings me to the second part, the A. So what I was talking about earlier is we're talking about how to increase the bar or raise the bar, your belief, activity, and results. So once you've done this, once you've raised your belief level, it's going to give you that energy. It's going to feed into your activity level your activity level, you know, you actually going to do something. Like I was saying, 
If you don't believe you can do something, you're obviously not going to take action on it. If you don't believe that you're going to be able to sign up, you know, a hundred people in the next two months, you're not going to do it. You're not going to even go act on it. You know, a lot of times people don't, you know, um, act or move on a thought because they don't actually believe they personally can do it. So understand your belief feeds into your activity. So your activity, your activity level, how much are you doing on a daily basis? So the second point is your activity level. Okay, how can we increase your activity level? Well, there's two ways that you can get more effective in this business, get more active in this business. The first one is, you know, you get better. Number one is you get better. You get better. You personally get better. Your, your activity levels personally get better. You know, at the beginning, you know, say you're presenting or you're inviting, or you're trying to have people see the business. You might suck. You might be completely awful at it. And that is okay. Because when I first started, I was awful at it. I was just on fire, just messaging people any which way, you know, not the effective ways that we've learned, you know, that we, you know, that we give you guys templates for and stuff like that. I was just going and going and going and going. So understand you get better with time. You will get better. The more and more you do, obviously the better and better you're going to get. It's just like basketball. Any, all my, any of my basketball fans out here, golf or whatever it is, if you want to get better at golf, you got to practice on your swing. You want to get better at basketball, you got to practice on the jump. You got to get the form right. You got to just do it. You're not going to get better by just only watching videos. Yes, personal development is great, but then you have to act upon these different things. You know, you have to prospect more people. Invite more people, do more presentations, you know, more marketing. You will get better at marketing. Your posts might suck. Your camera angles might suck at first. They might not be as crispy or as clean, or your bio might not be as creative or attractive, you know, as somebody that's been doing it for four or five years, but you will get better. That's how you raise your activity level. And the second thing it kind of feeds off of it is you get better. And then now the second thing is you do more. You just do more. You do more of everything. And I'm talking about listening to personal development, but then going ahead and reciting it to people. All the stuff that I'm telling you now is just things that I've learned over the years. This is me reciting all the information that I've learned over the years back to you guys. It's very simple. And I, you know, at one point in time, I probably wasn't the smooth of a speaker. I just probably wasn't. But with time and doing more, me doing more, you do more. And you know, how do you just do more? Well, one of the best ways we usually link activity in this um, in this industry is show the plan. Show the plan. That should go through your head every single day. Show the plan. You know, if you're not showing the plan, you're obviously not getting paid on this side. You have to go show the plan. So understand you have to do more. You show the plan. And the cool thing is eventually it is not just you. Making money is a team sport. I wholeheartedly believe this, you know, any successful company, any successful entity, any successful partnership, anything, it is not just a one person does it all. I can't, I didn't, you know, hit six figures, um, six figures in this industry by me doing everything. It just didn't happen like that. It can happen like that. And that's why I'm grateful because eventually it's not just you. It flips from at the beginning, you doing a bunch and almost, I mean, honestly, everything possible to get better. And to put people in and show the plan and stuff like that. And then you find somebody else that wants to do the same thing. Then you find another person. Then, you know, say you're showing four to five people a week. Now they're showing four to five people a week and they're showing four to five people a week. Now, instead of it's just your four to five, you're showing what, 12 to 15. You see how these things work. So you do more, but gradually it's going to just become you as a whole and your entire unit and your team and your business partners. It'll all become one, you know, one. And obviously, that is when I would see the activity will increase because you can't you can't put this, this. The business is not built on the back of one person. Put this down for put write this down. This business success is not built solely off the back of one person. Yes, there are leaders. Yes, there are people at the forefront. Yes, there are people that do more. There are people that do more. But this is a you know money making is a team sport. It's not solely just going to be based off you. So obviously, your activity will increase and you know another way to raise your activity levels you know increase your activity level is do what you're no write this down do what you said you were going to do do what you say you were going to do do what you said you're going to do what you say you're going to do if you say you're going to do something you tell yourself tomorrow i'm going to wake up and i'm going to invite 10 to 20 people to come see this you know this opportunity <clears throat> don't just wake up and not do it 
or don't just wake up and do three to 10 or three to four. You know, if you said you're going to do 10 to 20, do 10 to 20. You know, I'm not telling you to do more than what you said you're going to do. Obviously, it's going to always be helpful, but at least do what you say you're going to do. Because if you do what you say you're going to do, if you say something and you actually go do it, your levels, are, your, your activity level is going to increase. And obviously, it'll, you'll feel good from it. You'll feel accomplished from it. Your belief might, you know, belief you're going to really, um, you know, raise. So understand that. So your activity levels can be raised. You know, results are an outcome of activity. Results are an outcome of activity. And for every action, there is a reaction. So with your activity levels, understand that, you know, understand that with your activity levels, every reaction, there's a reaction. So if you do nothing, you're obviously not going to, like, there's a reaction to that as well. If you don't do anything, well, what's the reaction? I mean, nobody comes into your business. Maybe the momentum dies out. Maybe the momentum dies out. You don't want your momentum to die. You want to constantly be in momentum. You know, there is an um, analogy that Josh's mom taught us when we first got into the business. And honestly, it is, it is, it is stand, it has stood the test of time for so long. And I love it. I love it so much because it's just so true. You know, your business is like a massive boulder. You're pushing it. And when you're first starting, when you're first starting your business, it takes so much strength, so much effort, so much intensity just to get it to move a little bit. But as you're pushing harder and harder and it starts gaining momentum and momentum, you're not having to push as hard as you possibly can all the time to get it up. No, now you're just tapping it. Now you're just tapping it. Now you're just tapping. It. That is momentum. Now it's going and rolling and you're tapping. You're just making sure it increases the momentum level. But what happens if you stop tapping? It's going to start losing momentum and start losing momentum. If you let it lose momentum for too long, it's going to come back to the very beginning. Then you got to push all you possibly can. So with your activity level, my point being is with your activity level is make sure you're consistent. Just make sure you're consistent with it. Do what you said you're going to do. Five to 10 every single day or 10 to 20 every single day for the next 90 days, do it. Don't slip up because once you get that momentum, you want to keep going and keep going and keep going because the moment you stop, you take three weeks off because, oh, my business is doing, oh, it's great. It's whatever. The moment you stop, then you have to probably redo it. So understand that you want to raise your activity level. And like I was saying, results are an, an outcome of an activity, right? So that's what leads me to the last point, increasing the BAR, increasing or raising the bar, belief, activity, and now results, raising your result level. So your activity or your results are a direct outcome of your activity level. Do you want results? If you guys want results, if you guys want the results, if you guys want to crush every single goal that you possibly set your mind to or any single thing that you ever want in your life, let me get some, let's switch it up. Let me get some twos in the chat. Let me get some twos in the chat. You guys are still following along with me. You guys are still going along with me. We need some tools. All right. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, raise your results, your result level. And this that's how it happens. It is all one big cycle. Once you get these results, and once you get these results as an outcome, I promise you, it makes you feel so good. It makes you feel so accomplished doing what you say you're going to do. You know, think about, and the, the, let me just put it like this. When it comes to results, find somebody that has exactly what you want. Find exactly, you know, somebody that has exactly what you want. It's, very, it's a very simple process. Find someone who has what you want. Do what they do. Say what they say. Move like they move and maybe put your own twist on it because that's what I always do. I'm always authentic. But I, a lot of the things I'm teaching here today are all things that I've learned from other people. So your results, find somebody who has them and move exactly like them. So let's go ahead and see this. Your belief, you see how it's feeding. Your belief, the more you do, the more you believe, the more you'll take action, the more activity you'll do. The more activity, your activity, what does that cause? Results. You will get results. And then once you get results, you feel amazing. And once you have results, that raises your belief level even higher. So you see how it's a 360 degree circle. You see how it goes around and around and around. If you want results, give some activity. If you want belief, get some results. How do you get results? Activity. How do you get activity? Belief. So understand, use these things and raise the bar. Raise the bar for your life. Raise the bar for everything that you've ever wanted because honestly, you deserve it. You know, we all probably come from different backgrounds or maybe similar backgrounds, but 
the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are. That's the one thing that I love about this business. Like I truly do is it doesn't discriminate. We all come in at an equal playing ground. When you first are brand new in this business, you come in at an equal playing ground. We all got to go get it. We all got to talk to our own, you know, our own people. We all have to hit up our own networks. We all have to do whatever it is we have to do to succeed. So it's like at the end of the day, if you can put in the work, you're going to receive the blessings. And it might not happen right away. And maybe it will. Some people swing it. I've seen people come in the business and kill it way faster than I have, multiple times, way faster, multiple times. But some people, they don't understand that it's a long game. So they might not always stick with it and then they might fall. So at the end of the day, let me, let me just let you guys know on a little secret. It is a last man slash woman standing mentality. And not just as in one person, but if you look around and see all the people that make the most money in this industry, have had the most success, talked on the most stages, impacted the most lives, it's the people that have been doing it the longest. It's a very simple game. If you want success, tell me you're going to be here. No, not tell me. Show me you're going to be here three to five years from now. And not, not quitting in between. And it's okay if you have quit and you've came back. That's okay. This is a brand new start. This company is a brand new start. This is, you can have everything you've ever wanted. You're here now on this call. You could be doing a lot of things. You could be playing the game. You could be watching. Well, football's on not, not tonight, but you could be doing a lot of things right now. So tell me, you know, if you're going to be here, Three to five years from now. If you're gonna be here five, actually scratch it, you're gonna be here five to ten years. Let me let me put five. Put five in the chat. Let's see five. You're gonna be here 10. Let me see some tens. Okay, see, I love that. You gotta have that long-term mentality. And if you truly believe it, if you truly believe you'll be here 10 years from now, you're gonna take action. And if you take action, you'll have results in those 10 years. And that is very, very simple. And that's how the whole entire game is played. You want to raise the bar in your life. Your belief fuels your activity. Your activity fuels your results. Your results then fuel the belief level. You guys feel me? If you guys got some value from that, if you understood, if you, if you get where I'm coming from, I want one last ones in the chat. One last ones in the chat. You're still sticking with me. All right. All right. So that right there is just a little bit on how I've learned, you know, how to elevate my life and understand this. It's all just one big circle. It's all one big cycle. So new, old, young, tall, short, skinny, fat, whatever it is, take that information, do it, you know, do exactly what I said and um, do it to the best of your ability. But thank you guys um, for that. And now it's actually time to pass it to my business partner, my brother. This is somebody who is well-respected in the industry, has touched thousands and thousands and thousands of lives. And, you know, a lot of times it doesn't even directly impact him. He's helped people, no matter what team, no matter what industry, he has always just been a servant leader to the game. And honestly, that's one of the biggest reasons outside of his work ethic, why I believe that he has had so much success in this industry. And I'm very blessed and honored to be able to call this man, not only my business partner, but my brother as well. So let me introduce you to Joshua Amison. Josh, are you here, big bro? Yes, sir. What's going on? Popping, baby. What it do? Appreciate you, man. Guys, that was absolute heat that Jay just dropped to the call. Uh, I literally love taking notes, even when he's going, man, because, you know, when we do these calls, he's studying different information that I'm studying. And so I, I like to actually, you know, take notes over and over and over and uh, obviously be able to learn from him. So if you guys got some value from Jay, drop value in the chat, type value in the chat. If you drop, if you got some value from Jay, guys, he, he's an absolute beast. And I'm just very grateful to be partnered with him, you know, it's, it's been an absolutely crazy three to four years. So I'm just, uh, I'm just starting up a Facebook live real quick. Just one second. Uh, all right, guys, well, we got some, uh, we got some cool stuff that we're going to cover right now. And, you know, on top of obviously what Jay went through, uh, I really want to go over this. And so if you haven't been taking notes throughout this call, not sure why, but I would definitely pull it out and start taking notes right about now. Okay. And so let's kind of get this started. Here's the first thing I want to kind of go over. Okay, this is the eight laws of leadership. And you want to get a whiteboard. You want to obviously put it in your notes. You want to live and breathe these things. I literally wrote these down on a whiteboard four years ago in college when I got started. I've had them written down since then on every single whiteboard in my room constantly. I'm always looking at them, okay? So make sure to write these down. Eight laws of leadership, right? Number one, meet with your team each week. Meet with your team every single week. 
whether that's, you know, obviously, uh, you know, like a team event, like it's a live team event, it's an in-person leadership event, it's a Zoom call to at least be with your team, but you need to meet with them all together at least once a week. That's extremely, extremely important, okay? So meet with the team once a week. Number two, create leaders. When someone comes in and they make the decision that they want to be a leader and they want to grow the organization, you need to help them be created into a leader. That's really what it is. You need to create them into a leader. And what does that look like? This is helping them become independent. When someone first joins your business, they're dependent. They're dependent on you. They're dependent on you. Then eventually they become independent. Now they're kind of walking on their own. They're walking on their own. It's kind of like a kid. You know, they're able to start walking on their own. And then eventually after being dependent to an independent, they become dependable. And dependable is what you want the leaders on your team to, you know, eventually get to is being dependable. They will work. They will hustle. They will do what they got to do so they can succeed no matter what. That is what you want to get to is the dependable point, guys. So number two, create leaders. Number three, personal development. Okay, this is a huge, huge part of this business is doing personal development. It's showing up to these calls. It's showing up to Matt's call last night. It's being on the live personal, uh, the live presentations that are held every Thursday at eight o'clock. It's, you know, doing one-on-ones with your leaders. It's listening to audios that I'm going to drop at the end of this call. It's listening to, you know, uh, obviously n- not garbage uh, on, on Netflix and stuff like that. It's, it's listening to the right things to get your brain right, guys. Number four, burning desire. This is one that's hard to teach. It is hard to teach burning desire. You know, you meet those people that are just hungry to win. Like they will literally do whatever it takes to win and nothing can stop them. That's because they have a crazy, wicked burning desire. Now, how do you develop a person or a burning desire? You know, it's, it's not easy to teach. Like I was saying, this is something that a lot, like a lot of people just like, it's kind of like they're raised with it. And oftentimes has to do with how you're raised, but a burning desire first stems from your why, you know, why are you doing this? If it's retiring your parents, if it's, you know, taking care of your sick family member, if it's paying off debts for everyone and everyone's held strapped financially, you got to use that why to fuel the desire that you have to go crush the business that you're in. That is a burning desire. It's got to make you freaking insane, man. So that's what a burning desire is. Number five, the team always comes first. Okay. Okay. So a, a, a lot of, uh, number three was personal development. Number four, burning desire. Is, is, yeah, number four, burning desire. Number five, sorry, the team always comes first. Okay, so let's talk about this one. I've heard a lot of times, you know, people, they, they put like God first, they put their family second, and they put business third. Sometimes if, if you really want to take care of family, business and your success has got to come before your family for a short period of time. It's got to become before your family. You know, there's been times where I've missed family events, Christmases, birthdays, like tons of stuff because I've been in other places of the country all around the world. You have to miss these things sometimes in order to uh, eventually take care of them. And so if they're really at the top of your list, sometimes you got to put success before them so you can go out there and actually take care of them, guys, okay? So the team always comes first. You always get on calls with them over hanging out with friends. You always, you know, do leadership calls. You always do presentations, one-on-ones, three-way calls before your own personal satisfaction. That's what it takes to get to a six-figure, seven-figure income in this business. The team's got to come first before you, 100%. They got to be on your back. Number six, lead by example. For everyone on this call, you're doing a great job. You're on the call right now. (laughs) So you're leading by example. That's awesome. For your team members that aren't on the call, you should put this on your story so they see, wow, I just completely missed out on that call. You know, you got to lead by example. Show them what you're doing through your social media, okay? Number seven is a really important one, okay? Start each day at zero. Some of you have been in this industry for a year, two years, three years, and you might feel just tapped out. Like, oh my gosh, like, man, I've done so much, so much. And again, this is a three to five year plan. So remember you're, you're in it. You know, 
there's some people I meet that come in and they're like, man, I, I'm tapped out, man. I, I ran for like 60 days, dude. Like, I'm just like, I'm drained. And I'm just like, sheesh. I'm like, okay. I'm, I mean, if you say so, man. But, you know, for me, I, I just knew. I knew it was going to take. I knew how hard I was going to have to work. And But I do know at the same time, every day I wake up, start each day at zero. I pretend I haven't done any presentations. I pretend I haven't done any leadership calls. I pretend I haven't hit any ranks or lost any ranks. I pretend I haven't made any money or lost any money, nothing. I start every day at zero. And you got to have a fresh slate. Because remember, this is a long term. You want to start every day at zero as if you are brand new and you're super hungry. Okay, start each day at zero. And the last one is create your legacy. I believe this is one of the most important ones on it, creating your legacy. And the reason why is because if you go build this business without integrity through lies and deceiving and just like cruelty and not compassion, not charisma, not positivity, it's going to be taken away 10 times faster than it was given to you. People know you by your legacy. They know you by who you are as a person, by, by how you made them feel. Just because you did a presentation with someone and they didn't get started, if you are moving correctly, if you are you know, using positivity and being kind to people and respectful even if they didn't join, they're going to be like, dude, that person was awesome though. Like, holy cow. Like I have a lot of respect for that person. Even though I didn't join their business, they're cool. You want to create your legacy guys. It's very important. Okay. So yeah, guys, that's the eight laws of leadership. I've had it written down. I look at them every day. I'm constantly teaching my team that, that that's really important stuff. Okay. Jay covered the law of averages. He really did. And so, you know, obviously he said the top five people you spend the most time with, you are the average of them. So this could be your parents. This could be your friends. This could be audios that you're listening to. This could be us via Zoom. You know, it literally, it's anything that you are, you know, basically around the most. You, you, if you listen to like uh, Eric Worre constantly all week round, all the time. If you listen to, you know, Matt Morris all the time. If you listen to Ed Milet all the time, they're, they're in your top five. And so you don't have to actually be with someone in person for them to be in your top five. You know, you want to, you want to be careful though, you know, with you, you know, being in, in groups though, if you're not the, if you're the smartest person in the group or the richest person in the group, they're pulling you down from your potential. You know, you want to be the least wealthy in the group. You want to be the, uh, the least smart in the group. You know, you want to have people pulling you up. And this, this is what it comes into this guys. You know, if you meet a whole group of people that are super wealthy and you're like, man, I just really want to hang out with those guys, those guys, they know that if they let you in, you're going to pull them down. They already, they already know it. However, if you earn it, they'll let you in. You got to earn it. Mentorship is earned. It's not given. You got to prove to them that you're not just going to pull them down and, you know, throw them off course and, you know, waste your time and stuff. And that's why I like to say mentorship's earned. It's not given guys. And so why? And it's because you can bring people up or down yourself. So just be very weary about who's around you, which friends, if you have negative friends, man, so many times, so many times I've had my top five best friends in high school. I will literally distance myself from a couple of them. And I tell them, I will not be around you until you get positive again. I can't listen to anything negative you guys say. I literally will tell them, I, you know, I don't want to hang out. No, like you're too negative. Sorry. And they, then they go on and they work on it. And I'm like, sorry, man, I'm a personal development factory. Like I can't help it. So um, yeah, guys, uh, just, just keep in mind when, if you know, your friends and family, as you're going through this, you know, it's a strong possibility that they won't, they won't support you. You know, they, they might not like it. You know, like I was saying on the last call, guys, you know, my, my family used to joke about how fast they could click through my stories, you know, and it is what it is. It's, this is all about mindset, but you got to keep a positive, healthy mindset on this, guys. A quote I wanted to touch on real quick is like, your friends and family won't support you until strangers celebrate you. And this is a very real thing. And, it, it, you know, I, I can't, <laughs> not bad, they kicked out a roommate. Hey man, that you got to do what you got to do. That's tight. Um, mad respect for that. But yeah, guys, uh, you know, family and friends usually won't support you until strangers celebrate you. This isn't always the case. And I, I had a very supportive, you know, mom that was in network marketing for 15 years, taught me a lot of stuff. And so I'm um, just, just, you know, keep in mind, some of your best friends in this business are going to be people you didn't even know. 
at all. You didn't even know them until you met them in this business. They're going to become some of your best friends. Okay. Cause the, the, the law of averages guys, the goal isn't to prove all the people wrong who don't believe in you. It's to prove the people right who did believe in you. So if you got some sort of animosity to people that are, you know, talking smack to you that don't believe in you, just let that go, let it go and just grind your face off to prove the people that are sticking out their necks for you that do believe in you. It's, it's just a real, real stuff, man. You got to have the right mindset about this. It's not to go prove them wrong. Like, man, I'm going to go smack this rank, make this money, flex it in their face. That's not what it's about. It's about just proving the people right who are there by your side. Okay. So you just kind of move, move with that mentality, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's all about positivity, mindset, and belief. It's the hardest things about this business. Picking up your phone and messaging people and following up with them and getting on the call and presenting and then enrolling them and then training them in the business and teaching them how to fight. That stuff's not hard. It's not hard. You'll, you'll eventually learn it. It's, it's systems. Positivity, mindset, and belief are the hard parts. And that's why it's so crucial to show up to these calls. The people that know we, they are not just us, but even a company leadership call, they know it's at 8 p.m. on Monday or Wednesday, but they book a presentation to show a prospect over that. I don't agree with that. I think these calls are worth way more than that one prospect. Now, some people might not agree with that. Again, I'm not perfect. Some people, that might've been the person that came in and changed your entire business, you know? But I believe that training your brain, coming to these calls is extremely important. You know, you have your five senses, you know, we'll wrap this call up here soon, but you got your five senses. You know, it's obviously touch, taste, hearing, smelling, and seeing. Okay. You have to be very careful about what you're like. They're like your antennas to your body. You have to be so careful about what you're allowing into that stuff. You know, like, like for an example, you know, we, we use it to sense things. Obviously, like if you're, if you're blind and you're deaf and you smell fire, you can see the, the house is probably burning down because you can smell it. If, you know, we're blind, you can touch around, you can feel this is probably paper, you know? So you, you just want to be really careful about what you're allowing into it. And so uh, I, the reason why I say that is because, you know, if you see something negative or you hear something negative, you experience something negative, it takes on average 15 positive thoughts to counteract that negative thought. So for every negative thought you have, it takes 15 positive thoughts on average to counteract it. So this is why you do personal development. You know, you, you ever have those days where you just think negative thoughts all day and the whole day just goes to freaking crap because you're like, man, I've just done so many negative thoughts today. That's why we do personal development so we can learn how to quickly cut those negative thoughts away. The second you start thinking one, you're like, no, 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 no. I'm not even gonna think that. And you just start flooding your mind with positivity that's how you go out and crush goals and vibrate high. You know, I was just talking about this with Brandon before this call. You know, I was doing I was doing a call with him one on one, Brandon Wildman. For those of you, Jay brought this up too. Music. If you're listening to negative music, music that's talking about drugs and guns and you know killing people and you know just like a bunch of things. Yeah, everyone does every once in a while. But I'm telling you, that's one of your five antennas. You're, you're hearing it and it's causing you to feel a certain way, have certain thoughts, causing you to feel a way and then take action and have results. So you want positive music only, positive music only. You know, when you're in that low vibration stage, you're not feeling too good. You hear, you hear like a negative song come on. Well, you feel that negative song. You're like, God, I totally relate to this negative song right now. I just want to jam out to it, right? I literally will force myself if I'm feeling like that, I will force myself to put on the positive one because you can literally feel your vibration and energy rising up. And so, no, yeah, Jay's like, Josh won't even let me print sad, sad boy music on in the car. I'm like, bro, I don't, even, I don't even want it near me. I don't got time. I do not have time to vibrate low. I literally don't. I don't have time to vibrate low. I need to stay vibrating high. Positive audios, positive music. That's it. And it doesn't matter if you get sick of it, man. It, it's, it's when you have high vibrations, you're attracting what high vibrations earn, which is success. Most rich people have high vibrations. Most people who are living in mansions, most people who are flying up on a jet, I wonder what they're vibrating on. You know, to attract those things, you got to stay in high vibrations. And so I won't let low vibrations near me. I can't, I do not have time for it at all. I got things to accomplish, you know, and people to help. So 
Uh, that's just a really big pointer for you guys. Don't listen to that stuff. I'm telling you, get it away from you. It's, it is toxic. Following bad accounts on social media, listening to stupid stuff on Netflix. Like you just got to feed your brain with positivity and watch what happens just over and over and over. You will turn into a completely different person. I remember me and Jay would like, you know, uh, a year or two ago, we would go out and like, you know, go socialize with people. And I literally couldn't help but start spitting personal development bars to everyone around us. Like I couldn't help it. I, I just couldn't help a peaking, a speaking in personal development. I literally couldn't. I just like, I, someone would say something negative or a problem or something that's going on. And I just know what to say and how to fix it. But you know, that's a different story. Here's, a, uh, here's one of the last things I'm going to teach you guys. Okay. So as you're going out, trying to get a free account in this business. Okay. If you haven't got a free account yet, I want you to drop a six inside the chat. Okay, drop a six inside the chat if you have not crushed your free account yet, aka gotten three personal enrollments. Okay, and it's okay if you haven't. Guess what? Almost everyone on this call has, so it's all right. I, I just want you to participate in this. Okay, drop a six in the chat if you have not gotten your free account. All right, I'm gonna break down probably why that is. It's very simple, and it's not because of your skill or anything like that. Okay, so this is called the rule of seven. All right. And I really, really want you to take notes on this. Uh, I'm actually going to grab it. And I'm going to drop it in the chat because I have it copy and paste it, okay? Let me pop that in there for you guys. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it real quick, all right? This thing is huge, what I'm about to explain, all right? So the rule seven states, this is just an average. This goes for any industry, okay? Out of every seven people you message or call, roughly one of them is going to actually even answer you. Okay. That's 14%. Out of every seven people that respond to you, one of them will actually hop on a call. Out of every seven people that actually hop on a call, one of them's actually going to join. For out of every seven people that join, one of them's actually going to take it serious. And out of every seven people who take it serious, Boom, one of them's a diamond. One of them blows your business up. One of them's a Jay Patno, a Matthew Thayer, a Justin Darn, a, a Jake Maldonado, <laughs> like ton, tons of different leaders like I mentioned, guys. But I'm telling you, you have to get through the numbers. You have to fully go through the law or the rule seven to go find a diamond. People will tell me like, man, I have reached out to 20, 30, 40 people and I don't have a free account yet. It's like, dude, follow the rule seven. It's all a numbers game. That's all it is. You got to break it down too. When someone's having issues, if you are a leader on this team and you hear someone that's having issues with anything in the business, whether it's getting someone to respond, getting someone to actually hop on a call, getting someone to sign up after the call, getting someone to get people to sign up, you know, you can break it down. Okay. If you look at that rule seven, just really think about it. You ask someone, okay, how many people have you messaged since you started the business? 200 people. Okay. Out of how many people of those 200 people have actually just responded to you, just type something back. They say probably a hundred out of the 200, you already got 50% of responses. You got to let them know that's above average. You're only supposed to be getting 14% roughly each time. So they're, they're doing 50% of the responses they're getting, they're actually getting replied to. That's blowing past the average. Now, out of those hundred people who actually replied to you on the text, how many of them actually hopped on a call? You're like, ah, probably like, I don't know, 30 out of the 100, that's 30% right there. 30% hopped on a call when you're only supposed to have around 14%. And now here, here's where it goes. You're like, okay, so out of the 30 people, you're above average on the first two. Out of the 30 people that hopped on a call and saw the information, how many got started? None. None? You're like, yeah, none. None have got started. You're like, that's your problem. You can literally pinpoint where they're having the issue. He's having troubles. That person, he or she's having troubles on launching the individual into the business after they've seen the information. The law of seven will break down where they're having the issues. You just got to ask how many people total have you spoke to and break it down. It's, it's, it's genius, guys. It's all a numbers game, okay? You find problems and fix them. Um, yeah, I, I always say this and I would, I would repeat this to your people too, man. What you lack in skill, you can make up in numbers. What you lack in skill, you can make up in numbers. I want to know why it's because hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Hard work beats skill when skill doesn't work hard. 
You could be the best presenter. You could be the best closer. You could be the best leader. You could be the best at everything. <laughs> but if you're not, if you're not working, it, it doesn't matter. If I, let me give an example to you guys and then, and then we'll close out this call. Let's say it's me and Jay. All right. We're, we're competing for enrollments. All right. Let's say out of every 10 people that Jay signs up, he gets nine of them. He has a nine out of 10 closing ratio. Okay. So we're, we're going for 30 days. Who can get the most signups? You know, <laughs> um, Justin, I'm not sure which part you said, but what you lack in skill, you can make up in numbers and hard work beats skill when skill doesn't work hard. All right, guys, check it. Let's say Jay can close, he can launch, he could sign up nine people for every 10 he shows. I sign up one person for every 10 I show. And over the course of the month, who do you think is going to win? Drop in the chat, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> Jay goes, Jay, drop in the chat, who do you think is going to win? Every 10 people Jay talks to, nine of them sign up. Every 10 people I talk to, one of them sign up. Who's going to win? But we got all the, ball, the polls in. All right, here, here's the real deal. I'm going to win. And it's because I'm going to go talk to 100 people and get 10 people signed up. He's going to talk to 10 and get nine signed up. Hard work beats skill when skill doesn't work hard. Okay? You can make up, you can, you, or what you lack in skill, you can make up in numbers. Okay. It's all a numbers game. One in seven, baby. So, um, you know, just throughout the call guys, I hope you were able to gain some value. You know, the, these calls are just information that we've learned from leaders that have what we want and we know that it works. So we just pass it along all this information. None of it's new. It, it's all the same in, information under the sun. We're just passing it along. And that's what we do as leaders. As we pass the information along, you as a leader have the duty and obligation. If you want to win in this business to pass the information along, Hence why we take notes. Okay, guys. So I absolutely love everyone in this call. I appreciate you coming in. Uh, my tip of advice, if, if you really want to go out and crush it this week, is you got to do something different. And doing something different requires with hearing different information. I would get plugged into this audio right here, guys. This is called Eric Worry's Seven Steps to Becoming a Network Marketing Professional. Okay. This is an insanely important audio. I've listened to it 10 times. Let's say you're, you're on this call. You're like, man, I've already heard that one time before. Do it again. Take notes on this, guys. This is seven simple steps on how to build a massive organization, how to help people build massive organizations within yours and duplicate forever, guys. It, it explains where the world's going and why this opportunity, network marketing, is not the best. It's just better. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll copy this and I'll drop these in the chat. And uh, I, I really high, highly recommend that you guys actually, you know, tune in, listen to this. And I know, um, so Spotify and Apple Music, just play it in the car, take notes, write it down. Obviously not while you're driving. Um, the last thing that we're going to mention real quick is obviously Jay just, just dropped it in there. But it is right here, guys. Coming up, obviously, very quickly is our actually very own company-wide event for Driven Trading, okay? This is going to be a huge, huge event. This is February 3rd and 4th out in Orlando, Florida. And this is going to be amazing. We're going to have some guest speakers that are going to absolutely change your life. When you hear this information and when you go to these events, you realize how real this really is. You might be sitting on a Zoom call with 30, 40, 50 people right now, sometimes 100, 200 people, but you don't know what you don't know until you attend one of these events. This is way more real than you could ever imagine. And so I would really recommend you invest in yourself and come and meet us there. We're going to be there. We're down to kick it. We're down to learn, grow, and just have the absolutely best next, next 365 days of our life. So with that being said, I appreciate everyone this call. Thank you for tuning in. Nine o'clock's rolling around. I'm sure there's some sessions out there. If you need help, I'll drop my phone number in the chat right here. Uh, feel free to reach out, ask any questions that you guys have. I'll answer any of your questions. Same with Jay. I know he will too. We'll work with anyone. Okay. We're down to help you win. And we're, we're, we're wanting to win with the entire company. Okay. So appreciate you guys have a blessed night. Peace out.